At a Dallas area event with local officials, Mark Cuban said that white people must have uncomfortable conversations about race. Cuban said from experience, the instinct when discussing race as a white person is to get defensive, but that must change to see progress made. So Shannon, do you find it difficult to discuss race with white people? I do. Because Skip, if you talk, if you talk all the way real about America and try to have an open and honest dialogue conversation with white America, yep. then it would go to the fact, it would tear down the very foundation, the very fabric in which America, they said America was built on. America was not built on freedom. America was built on racism. And the backbone, the lifeline, the mm -hmm. economy of America was built on the backs of slaves. That is fact. Yep. And racism is so ingrained in America because, Skip, from the very first time when you brought those slaves over in 1619, you had someone to look down on. You robbed him of his given name. You robbed him of his dignity. You robbed him of his humanity. Mm -hmm. You told him he was less than. You treated him as less than. And then somehow you say, what? Mm -hmm. That America is what? America is how? He never, he never received that. You got 250 years of free labor. Yep. 250. Because, Skip, let me tell you how this works, Skip. Mm -hmm. When you hire someone to do something, either you can't do the job or you don't want to do the job. So which is it? So as America was thriving, mm -hmm. who was doing the work? The workers, it wasn't you. Mm. Not only were they working in the field, they were taking care of your kids before they could take care of their own. Mm. So this, this notion that America, will, uh -huh. white people, they, we did all this. No, you didn't. Skip, and, 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 and then you have to look, the greatest purveyor of racism and violence is the American white man. No race of people have suffered more on American soil than the black. No one to this day. Mm. So you had 250. I mean, you, you could argue the Native Americans. The, 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 the skip. Yeah. They weren't enslaved for 250. No, no they were not. Now, it, they, it, they were just murdered it, often it, and their homes taken from them. We, that's what I happened got it, I got it. And I'm just saying, for on balance. Yeah. Yes. And the thing was, Skip, and they still did it, and they did it. Yeah. See, guess what they did? So they've been stealing and looting since the inception of America. True. So when you talk openly and honestly mm -hmm. about how what they did yep. to the American black, and they was like, oh, get over that. That was so long ago. That's ingrained. Mm. Years and years, Skip, where you don't have any income. So great-grandfathers had, had sons and sons and sons that had nothing. They had no wealth. While they were passing it down from generation to generation, he was a slave owner. His son was a slave owner. His son became a slave owner. Mm -hmm. His son became a slave owner. You see how that wealth kept going down the line? Mm -hmm. Well, we were having to start from scratch and skip because, you know, you couldn't read. A lot of these guys, they couldn't read. And if they caught you reading, they beat you or they killed you. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it took us a long time. And those were the ones happened to be the few that overcame. Yep. So if we have open and honest conversation about what America is and how America came to be, how do you tell the story without telling about the American slave and his significant role in American history? Mm. But they'll tell you about George Washington. Mm. They'll tell George Washington had slaves. They'll tell you about Thomas Jefferson. He owned slaves too, but he wrote the Declaration. You see, Skip, but he wrote the Declaration of Independence. What about them slaves that he had? Mm. What about that? He even had kids with him. Um, yeah, and that wasn't by choice. Sadly, him was 14 mm -hmm. years old. Yep. So in other words, and he took across state lines and across seas for a moral purpose. Mm -hmm. But that's Skip, I don't want to get too far to that. But you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So do. if we tell the story of America in its totality, truthfully, honestly, white America can't deal with that, Skip, mm -hmm. because they want to feel that we discovered it because we wanted a better way of life and we yada, yada, yada. But that's not it. Mm. And so you're going to have to rewrite history. All those history books will have to be burned. Instead of, instead of sidebars and footnotes, the Amer African-American would have to feature, be featured very prominently. And I don't know if America really wants to do that. Mm. I really don't. Have you ever sat down and had a conversation with a white man about race relations like you just no. had? No, because any time we talk about race, the first thing they talk about, well, Shannon, what about the black-on-black -black crime? Mm. What about the violence in Chicago? You see, it's always, Skip, I got to shift it. I don't want to talk about, uh, let's talk about this head on. Let's yeah. talk about what you did, how you robbed and pillaged mm -hmm. and looted uh, Native Americans of their land and how you enslaved, brought men and women 
to, to, to cultivate this land, to grow, the, skip cooking. Who did all the cooking? Miss mm -hmm. Mary ain't do no cooking. Mm. Who took care of the kids? She ain't take care of no kids. Mm. So man, stop this. If, if you're gonna tell the story, we're gonna have to tell it in totality, Skip. Yep. But we'll have to tell it honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, Skip, that's for, that's 400 years. That's too much history. You over 401 years. You don't really want to rewrite that kind mm -hmm. of history. So where did you grow up? I grew up rural, in rural South rural Georgia. Rural South Georgia. And there were still around you some vestiges of plantation mentality. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. And you grew up in that sort of circumstance where you felt it all around you. You you actually it it, it you, you could feel it coming into your pores as a little kid. Yes. You got it yes. in ways some black people maybe in cities couldn't quite experience the way Shannon Sharp Well Skip, did. I grew up in there the movie theater was set the movie theater yes. it was it was segregated. Okay. We sat up top, the white sat down uh sat down low. That that was uh we sat it it was funny Skip because at the beginning when I was going to school the black side at the front of the bus, the white side at the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, the collect when we play, went outside to play, it was whites versus the blacks. Mm. There was not a whole lot of, of you know, we teamed up. It yep. was white basketball, kickball, softball, football, whatever it was. So, Skip, it was there. I mean, they tried to arrange it so, you know, the blacks would. But if it was left to us because of what we felt, it would have been blacks on one side, whites mm. on the other side in the classroom. Mm. Okay. So now Mark Cuban has called out white people saying, you, you've got to give up your white privilege. You've got to quit trying to disqualify yourself by saying, well, I have a lot of black friends, as he's, I'm quoting Mark here, or, hey, I grew up in a mixed community, so I can't possibly be someone who takes advantage of white privilege. Okay? <laughs> and that's, I'm sure it's an attitude you've sensed from yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. white people. Right. Okay, because Mark has called out white people, that, that brings me to my childhood and my upbringing, and I'm going to share it with you right now because, to me, it was the opposite of white privilege. The way I was raised was very differently, I believe, than many or maybe even most white people were raised. Okay. And I, I preface all this up front by saying if black people want to scoff at what I'm about to say, feel free. If black people want to disqualify what I'm about to say by saying you still have no idea what you're talking about, be my guest because it's highly possible I don't. If you want to disqualify what I'm about to say, please tell me because I know this. You and I have had a lot of conversations about race relations. Yes. We had one before the show this morning Yep. in many ways, shapes, and forms. And one thing that I'm proudest of about our relationship is – that I, I welcome every potential race topic because I love to listen to you and I love to learn from you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even today, mm -hmm. I have learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from what you just told me across the table mm -hmm. just now. Okay, so back to my childhood. My mother was a wreck. I was the firstborn, so I took it right between the eyes. Mm -hmm. My father was a bigger wreck. So Throughout my early childhood, four, five, six, seven, eight, I got left at my grandmother's where I was basically raised by a black woman. Her name was Katie Bell Henderson. She grew up in Alabama. Her grandparents were slaves, mm -hmm. but then she was raised for, in high school on the south side of Chicago. So she had Alabama and south side of Chicago. And she was tough and she was smart. And she became my mother. I had no respect for anything my mother taught me because she didn't try to teach me anything. Everything I learned about right and wrong, black and white, I learned from Katie Bell. Mm -hmm. She worked for my grandmother, who didn't have a lot of money because my grandmother traveled for her work. So Katie Bell ran her household. There were some grandkids who would come and go through the house, but my grandmother often wasn't there. So Katie Bell was the matron. She, she ran it all. So uh, I spent many nights with Katie Bell, many days with Katie Bell, watching the show she loved. The Edge of Night was her favorite soap opera. <laughs> you remember Gunsmoke? I a, do a remember weekly Gunsmoke. Yep. Western. Western. It always had a message mm -hmm. to it. So that's why she wanted me to watch Gunsmoke. Do you see what they're teaching you here? Mm -hmm. So Katie Bell would even go so far as to take me occasionally to her AME church. You know AME churches? where I was the only white face in an all-black congregation. Mm -hmm. And 
They treated me with nothing but love. And it dawned on me later, the reason they did is because every black face in that congregation knew what it felt like to be the only black right. in, in, yes. in a congregation mm -hmm. of white people, being yes. around a bunch of white people, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And I felt a joy in those services. I felt a spirit. I felt an energy that I never felt in my own all-white church, mm -hmm. right? Right. So that was powerful to me and significant in my, my evolution to see that. She also, Katie Bell, would bring down her granddaughter every summer for the whole summer. Mm -hmm. Her granddaughter would stay at, at my grandmother's mm -hmm. house. So I, her name's Audrey, and, and she was exactly my age. So at six, seven, and eight, I'm, I'm spending summer afternoons in the backyard with Audrey making up silly games. Right. But we're talking about the south side of Chicago where she lived. Well, that's, listen, you want to talk about a blessing for me? So my hellish existence at, in my house oh. turned into silver lining because th this is rare. What, what, what white kid could get that kind of an education? Right. Where I'm not just with Katie Bell. I'm, she's my authority figure. So everything she's teaching me, I'm, I'm, I'm taking in because I don't know any better. But she, she, I'm going to do nothing but respect her right. because she proved right away. She knew way more than my mother did. So one fateful afternoon, a cousin was over. And I, as usual, because I was always getting into skirmishes with others, I got into one with my cousin. And within earshot of Katie Bell Henderson, my cousin blurts out, calls me the N-word. I nearly died on the spot. <laughs> I knew all about what that word meant. Right. And I had spoken about it with Katie Bell. Mm -hmm. She stopped what she was doing. She marched right over to my cousin. She picked him up, we're probably eight, right. picked him up by the lapels of his shirt and pulled him up to her and said, don't you ever say that word again as long as you live. And I don't know this for a fact, but I'm going to guess my cousin never said that word again. <laughs> I don't know that, but I'm going to guess that. Right. So Katie Bell passed while I was in college. Mm -hmm. And yet right out of college, as I got into our business right away, I gravitated to black players to talk about race. Mm -hmm. And you know my background. Right. I've written about race. I've had many conversations with black players. Why? Because... It was so natural to me. It was second nature to me. I grew up that way. I, I knew it because I was taught it from a woman who lived it. Mm -hmm. So right away, I began to have conversations about race on radio. And then that segued into conversations about race on television. Right. And all I've done for the last 15 years on debate type shows is, if I may say so, fearlessly talk about race, but I don't think I'm fearless. I just, I, it, it comes so easily right. to me because I've always talked about race. I think the reason why it's so easy for you to talk about race, Skip, because you've, you've accepted the part that the white man has played in the shaping of America and the atrocities in which he's perpetu mm -hmm. uh, uh, perpetrated against this black America and the Native Americans on American soil. You're open to that. A lot of people are not open to that. The reason why blacks are so open, it's happened to us. Yep. It's cathartic for us because we're talking about what has happened. You see what, Skep, what you're doing is that you said, and, and my grandmother did a lot. My grandmother uh, had that type of relationship where she worked for people and she raised their kids and she would let them play with her own, you know, with her kids. Mm -hmm. But Skip, that goes back centuries. Because the black women would suckle the white children mm -hmm. before they suckled their own. So if you want to tell the story in its totality, Skip, there's a, something, a, 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 something called a Mississippi appendectomy. What that was was that, that black women would go to get procedures and the doctors would remove, the his, have given them a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. So in order to tell the story about America, you have to tell it all in its totality. That's true. The good, yep. the bad, and the indifferent. Skip, we don't want to tell that side. We want to paint America as... Because America is viewed as this place on a hill that everything is so pristine, it's so ah, it's so lovely. But if you go back and you look at his history, 1619. Yep. Nah. Now, nah, even when it, they said the 1965 Emancipation freed the slave mm -hmm. skip, freedom to do what? Yep. Skip, if he had no education, he had no money, he had no land, guess what he went back and did? He went right back to the very same situation. And they called it sharecropping. Uh, what are we sharing? Mm. Am, are we splitting this 50-50? Mm. No, you work for me, I give you a place to stay, but I get all the benefits of the, of the, uh, of the crop. 
Okay. So I want to be clear playing off a point you just made. Katie Bell disciplined me. Mm -hmm. She scolded me. Yeah. She, she punished me. Mm -hmm. She taught me at age eight-ish the word hypocrite. She yeah. wanted me to understand what the word hypocrite meant. Right. So to your point, maybe this has happened down through history in yeah. ways I don't even understand. Yeah, we, 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 we big on that, Skip. You know, it, there's always been community butt cutting. Yeah. Uh, so a friend of yours, you, you acting up, it, it, didn't have to be, it didn't have to be your mom or your aunt or your grandma. Yeah. You acting up. Miss Adamayo, Miss Adapro might tear your tail up. Okay. You were going to act accordingly. It was community whipping. So, so hey, you, was a, okay. you act a fool, you got tore I got up. it. Last quick story about Katie Bell, just to validate how much she meant to me. This happened three months ago, and it's a weird story, but I'm going to quickly tell it. My wife, Ernestine, has wanted me to try talking to a psychic because she has a couple that she talks to or has talked to fairly regularly. Okay. I have no, never believed in it. Right. Nope, not. So she connected with a psychic by the name of Joseph, a black man who lives in New York but grew up in New Orleans, and she said, he is gifted. You, you would be blown away if you just get on the phone with Joseph. Can, can I, would you try it? And I said, okay, for once I'm going to try it. This is in February. Right. So I called Joseph. She did not set this up with he's my husband. He, Joseph had no idea who I was, what I was. He only knew that I somehow was, I was an acquaintance of Ernestine. Right. So he gets on the phone. He explains what he's about to do. It seems really bizarre to me. I'm not buying. I'm not buying. And he asked me a question. I asked him a question. And we're not five minutes into our discussion by phone. And he says, oh, hold on. Somebody wants to join us. This is God's truth. I'm like, what? Somebody wants to join? Well, who wants to join? <laughs> Somebody who's deceased, right. obviously, from the, the other world. Right. And I said, okay, I am not buying any of it. Right. He said, it's a black woman. A black woman? I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, well, let me describe her to you. Ba, ba, ba. And I said, Katie Bell? He said, yes, it's Katie Bell. She wants you to know she's always with you and that she's so proud of you. And it gives me goosebumps right now to tell that story. That is the God's truth, the first five minutes with the psyche. And I said, thank you, God, for Katie Bell. Yeah. But see, Skip, the thing is with you, although you're stubborn, you're very open-minded, you're very receptive to see a different mm -hmm. point of view, even though it, it, it doesn't coincide mm -hmm. with your own. So many people that look like you, that of your color, that, that talks like you, that sounds like you, they're unwilling to do that. They're mm -hmm. so hell-bent. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. So... I don't want to hear anything. Forget the knowledge. Forget the fact that you benefited for what mm -hmm. my ancestor did. Did That's you true. benefiting yep. from being white in America? Mm -hmm. So you already skipped. Yep. You already at third base. I'm at home. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm swinging, mm -hmm. but I already got two strikes. Yep. So to deny that, it, it, I, I don't know why you would. It's okay. I, I mean, it's okay when people say, "Well, Shannon, you look." I mean, I had muscles and I could run fast. Shannon, you had a, you, I had an advantage. I, okay, I'm not going to deny that. Mm. It's not, oh, well, no, no. I understand that working on a farm and having older brothers and older cousins, it helped me to be more advanced than kids my age or a grade older than me. I understood that. But for you to deny that you benefited mm. from this, why? Because all, now all of a sudden, you're not as smart. You're not as hardworking as you would like for people to believe. Yep. Think about that, Skip. What's the stereotype about black? They're lazy. How the hell you be lazy and be a slave and build America? <laughs> I never understood that. Y'all lazy. You're savages. Everything that you see a lot of black America is a learned behavior. What do you think they learned it for? They learned to see how you did, you split them up, and how you killed them, and how you did things when they tried to vote, and what you did to the Native Americans. They mm -hmm. see that. So they learned it from you. Everything, they learned it from you. Mm. The rioting, the looting, the stealing. But you don't, you don't want that side of history to be told. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they got it from. From you. Because mm. you taught them. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, bro, mm. for having this conversation. Allow me to have this conversation. Allow me to have this platform. I appreciate you guys. Skip, thank you for sharing your story about Katie Bell.
She sounds like a pretty amazing woman. And Shannon, we talked last week, and you said something to me that I think about, actually, I've thought about every day. I will never understand what it's like to grow up in rural South Georgia. I'll never get it. I have had an easy 30 years, and I have been reading and watching and learning. And you guys, I hope that you know how much I appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.